Bringing you the latest information on medicine, psychology, diagnosis, treatment, and prevention. Major medical advances are made each week, and each week the American Health Journal keeps you up to date. Hello and welcome to this edition of the American Health Journal. I'm your host, Roger Cooper. Today's program offers the newest information to improve the quality of your life. First up, a special report on a breakthrough in heart disease prevention. We'll speak with a Nobel Prize winning researcher about how to improve your heart health. Now on the American Health Journal. An amazing discovery has proven vital to cardiovascular health. Nitric oxide. Our executive producer, Roland Perez, interviewed the winner of the 1998 Nobel Prize in Medicine on this recent discovery. At the David Geffen School of Medicine at UCLA, I had the opportunity to interview Dr. Louis Ignaro. Dr. Ignaro won the Nobel Prize in Medicine for his research into nitric oxide. And now he's using nitric oxide in exciting new treatments for heart disease that produce instant and dramatic results that may lower blood pressure and even reduce cardiac disease. Nitric oxide was a molecule I wasn't studying until the late 1970s. My colleague who shared the Nobel Prize, Fred Murad, had discovered that nitric oxide could elevate the cellular levels of an important signaling molecule called cyclic GMP. And uh, we became interested in, uh, in how this might uh, occur. Uh, we knew that drugs like nitroglycerin, which had been used since the days of Alfred Nobel, 150 years ago, to treat hypertension and treat heart pain, uh, we knew the drug worked very well, but the mechanism of action was unknown. So we thought that perhaps the nitro part of nitroglycerin might somehow be converted in the body to nitric oxide. And so we did some key experiments and we showed that nitroglycerin can be metabolized, if you will, to nitric oxide in the smooth muscle of the arteries. And we then showed that nitric oxide was the active principle responsible for the vasodilating action of the nitroglycerin. So this is how we first started to look at NO because we suspected nitroglycerin might work through a nitric oxide mechanism. And what this led to very simply was the recognition that nitric oxide is such a potent vasodilator in the body and we couldn't understand why our body would have receptors to interact with an outside chemical like nitric oxide unless our bodies made nitric oxide but we didn't know about it. So we set out on a five-year project that turned out to be five years to try to find and isolate a nitric oxide-like substance in the body and that's when we discovered that the arteries, the endothelial cells of the arteries, actually make nitric oxide. The same nitric oxide that's generated from nitroglycerin. Once we, we meaning the scientific community, appreciated the protective effects of nitric oxide in the cardiovascular system, the question asked was, well, how can we stimulate our own nitric oxide production? So many drug companies set off, and they're still uh, working on this, trying to develop prescription drugs for stimulating nitric oxide production. But after understanding the way nitric oxide is produced in the body, uh, we had the idea that uh, we could get by uh, with uh, non-prescription drugs, uh, amino acids, antioxidants, and so on, to stimulate the production of nitric oxide. And what we found was that simple amino acids like arginine and like citrulline when combined with certain antioxidants like vitamin C and vitamin E. When all of these are taken together, they can markedly boost the production uh, of nitric oxide and also stabilize the nitric oxide, preventing it from being uh, inactivated by those oxygen radicals that I was telling you about. So this is one uh, very simple way to stimulate uh, one's own nitric oxide production. But there are other things one can do as well. For example, it's well appreciated in the past few years now that exercise is the body's principal way to increase nitric oxide production. When, the, when you're exercising, you have increased blood flow. Your heart is pumping the blood faster through the arteries. This increase in blood flow through the arteries 
stimulates nitric oxide production by the arteries. And there's a marked stimulation. So the more exercise you do for the longer period of time, the more of this protective nitric oxide you're generating. And then thirdly, diet. Diet is so important because now it's well known that a diet that's rich in fats and lower in protein promotes oxidative stress oxidative stress, which can lead to diabetes, can lead to obesity, and most importantly leads to a deficiency of nitric oxide. And then once that happens, you have all of the accompanying uh, side effects of a deficiency of nitric oxide, like atherosclerosis, stroke, heart attack, and so on. I think that uh, that, that kind of uh, uh, program would go a very, very long way to maintain cardiovascular protection and probably uh, allow the person, enable the person to, to live a longer life. There's lots of long-term uh, benefits available from, from uh, nitric oxide therapy. We know quite a few of them today, and uh, each month that goes by, there's a new publication about a, a, a new long-term benefit. The, the long-term benefits in the cardiovascular system are, um, uh, are, are very, very important. One would be to prevent an increase in blood pressure or to lower the blood pressure once it's abnormally elevated. In other words, to treat hypertension, okay, to lower the blood pressure. Also, another uh, long-term benefit would be to protect against the incidence of stroke and myocardial infarction. One of the things nitric oxide does is it subtly interferes with blood clotting. It doesn't just prevent blood clotting if you have an injury, but it does prevent unwanted blood clotting. Unwanted meaning you don't want blood clots to occur in the coronary artery to cause a myocardial infarction, and you don't want clots to occur in the cerebral arteries, which would cause a stroke. So when you have a normal, healthy endothelial layer in the arteries, the nitric oxide that's made will protect against the development of stroke and against myocardial infarction. And uh, another uh, very important protective effect of nitric oxide is to protect against atherosclerosis or coronary artery disease or plaque formation in certain arteries of the body. So those are just three to name a few. Dr. Ignaro's five-year project investigating the role of nitric oxide has resulted in a new book that may change how cardiovascular disease is prevented and treated. The name of the book is No More Heart Disease, where the NO stands for NO, or nitric oxide. And uh, I think the name is a good one because uh, if a person is going to embark on and stay on a, a, a nitric oxide therapy, I think that, uh, you know, which is, would be a lifelong process, uh, one would have very significant protection against cardiovascular disease. But once an individual has serious cardiovascular disease, th there's no question that embarking on nitric oxide therapy does begin to reverse the process. The blood pressure comes down, the uh, cholesterol levels, LDL levels begin to come down, kidney function is restored, limb pain in diabetics uh, disappears, uh, and so on. So that's a restoration uh, of function. So it's kind of a reversal. I'm not saying 100% reversal, but I'm saying it, it's, it's a gradual reversal. And of course, this has been going on only for several, two, or two years or so. We don't know what's going to happen um, you know, 10 years from now. We essentially have just begun to scratch the surface, in my opinion, and in the opinion of the investigators working in this area. So there are many, many things to look forward to with regard to nitric oxide therapy and the possible prevention of other kinds of disorders outside the cardiovascular system. The main reason I wanted to write this book uh, is very simple. Uh, I spent 30 years of my life doing research, making contributions to the discovery of a very important molecule, nitric oxide, that serves uh, to protect the cardiovascular system against disease. Okay, put very simply, the lay public does not read the papers I publish in the scientific journals. How do I tell two billion people out there that this is what they should be doing to protect themselves against cardiovascular disease. And so one of the ideas was to try to write a book, a good book, perhaps a bestseller, if I'm lucky. And perhaps with that as a start, I can begin to communicate 
with the people out there in the rest of the world to try to follow uh, my plan for the development of uh, cardiovascular protection and a longer life. Dr. Ignaro's exciting discovery will open doors to new kinds of exploration into the cardiovascular system that will definitely benefit mankind. If you have any questions regarding this interview, please call us at 800-303-3200. I'm Roland Perez for the American Health Journal.